So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay on the standard build at the moment, so that's 0.96, and this is going to be on the Beacon of Gondor map, which I don't know if this is an updated version of it or not. I can't actually remember being able to go up to the Beacon in this way, but then it is a long time since I've played on the Beacon of Gondor map myself, because it is a map which has existed in some form or another ever since the vanilla version of the game. Uh, but this is going to be a somewhat odd battle because there are going to be three teams involved, one of which is a team of one, which of course is going to be Gondor, played by Master Blaster, who sent me the replay, so a big thanks to him. It's been a while since I've gotten a replay from Master Blaster and that's mainly because he's been playing on the test build and there's rules about sort of who's allowed to submit replays from the test build and also he's been making a few maps as well, but still it's good to get some content from him. Also this is probably going to be one of the last times we get to see the old models from Gondor, obviously they've been given a bit of a makeover for 0.97, uh, but their job is essentially to survive. They need to defend the beacon and that is going to be their whole reason for being on this map and then there are going to be two teams of three which are both going to be competing with one another and against Gondor to try and take the beacon so I'll be interested to see how these two teams of three interact with one another I would imagine as well that Gondor probably got a ludicrously uh, sort of elite army as well to sort of make up for the fact that they are going to be horrendously outnumbered and they will need these two separate teams to sort of try to attack one another to some extent before they go after Gondor because otherwise you know, they're not going to last too long, you would imagine. Uh, well, let's go through the Gondorian army first of all. So we see here some Wardens of Minas Ithil, which obviously are the elite ranger. They have the 6 damage, of course, multiple HP as well. Uh, but they do have a smaller unit size, but obviously if they can get into the right position, rangers on this map, particularly with a very narrow choke point like the one that leads up to the beacon, obviously going to be potentially very, very handy indeed. Uh, we have, I believe, the General's Bodyguard unit. This is, I think, the General's model bank here. The LSL's Vanguard, obviously a good multiple HP sort of Swordmaster unit, which obviously very heavily armoured as well, should be able to do very well if it's backed up. Uh, just in front of the trebuchets here we have the Athelian Rangers, so more body piercing projectiles, as well as the trebuchets themselves, which obviously could do tremendous damage when the uh, when the going gets tough, when the blobs start to fall. Some Wardens of the White Tower, as well as some Nimlothian Honor Guard combined with Fountain Guards, obviously very elite forces here at the top. Care Andros Marksman, which double as pretty decent two-handed swordsman in melee, not quite to the same level as sort of dedicated human swordmaster units, uh, but even so, a damn sight better in melee than quite a lot of other human archers. Uh, speaking of which, veterans of Osgiliath with the first level of armor upgrade. Uh, these guys are pretty good in melee as well, although more so as sort of hybrid line infantry rather than swordmasters, so obviously shields. A little bit more defensively orientated, not as likely to get as many kills. Down here, some Citadel Guard, obviously what sets them apart, even in point nine six as being good spearmen, is the fact that they have got that armour piercing, which makes them able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most infantry units of a similar quality. Uh, some Care Andros Marksmen over here as well, and then down here I imagine we have the fully upgraded Gondor infantry. Uh, we've got the fully upgraded Axemen of Lasarnak to add some AP in here as well, two units of which. Then some more Gondor infantry and spearmen, again fully upgraded. More spearmen, and I imagine it's going to be similarly yep, infantry and spearmen. So down here the more disposable part of the army but then every attacking army is going to have to go through this little encampment before they start heading up the hill. Now let's go through the team which is more to the right hand side of the map from a mini map perspective and we have Hunter Wayward playing as Rune who traditionally do fairly well against Gondor just because of the AP but I imagine Gondor have got a higher level of quality in their army so we've got a catapult which obviously could do some decent damage to the Gondorians in formation but obviously we'll have to wait and see about that. Eastron Clansmen with both levels of armour upgrades. Again, they are a militia unit, a very good militia unit, uh, but against the quality of Gondor in this situation, that won't be enough to carry them over the line, you would think, without support. Narim. Uh, the Narim are actually more of a damage focus archer, which in this situation, they may very well be skirmished down before they can get into a good position, but even so, decent damage from them, as well as some upgraded Eastron crossbows, obviously crossbows with all that stopping power. Uh, some Gamperim, obviously the AP could be very useful at dealing with Gondor in particular, which it definitely looks as though with the way these teams have sort of set themselves out, it would appear as though Rune are going to be the ones tasked with wearing Gondor down from the outset. Flagrim, obviously, so that's more AP. Beriag Mercenaries, the more... the archers that do better when under arrow fire, just because of their shields. More Easter on crossbows back here. And then the Runic General is going to be in the Carmel's Chosen, which obviously... Not as good as the Wardens of the White Tower they will be facing, but still a very strong and quality infantry unit there. The first of the allies for Hunter Wayward is going to be... Oh, 
We have Revan of Korriban, who's going to be playing as Mirkwood, who has gone for a very quality-focused army himself, by the looks of things. Uh, he's gone for a lot of Hiri Peng, as well as the Dagnirim, which obviously are going to be able to offer them mobility as well as damage, and the Abranon Inanwe, which are, I believe that's going to be the General's Bodyguard. It's going to be fairly difficult to pick Thranduil, Thranduil out from the crowd here, uh, but obviously multiple HP Spear Cab. Mirkwood also do have a lot of hidden units in their roster available to them, so I would imagine this is not the entirety of Mirkwood's army, and that Raven of Korriban does have a second wave ready to move up somewhere. And then the final army helping out over here is going to be Lord Griffiths, who's going to be playing as Imladris, so two elven factions alongside the Easterlings. So we've got some Gwaithi Arthan, some Imladris Blademasters, again very quality focused here, with some upgraded Imladris Guardians. Uh, the terrain, however, might very well work against them, but then they may very well also be the final wave to attack the Gondorians. The Gwaithi Rock Doors Knights, which should add to some presence and killing power against the other factions which are down here on the low ground, as well as some Haru Myro, some Haru Vital, and some Haru Masil. So again, very quality focused, and then some companies of archers, some Eldar Quinga, and some Haru Quinga, sort of getting ready to meet the advance of the of the team of three, which is which is over here. Get my words out. Starting off with the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, played by Baconfish302. So he's got some Drake Broodlings, which we actually haven't seen too much of the Drake Broodlings lately. We'll see how well they can do. Obviously, fantastic charge damage that they have, which could do lots of nice damage to Imladris, as well as some Bolg Champions and some Warg Riders and a lot of Trolls. So it could be a bit of a problem for that Imladris Cav, but in terms of overall melee expertise, Imladris are not really beaten by anyone in .96. Numenor might have something to say about that in .97. Cave Trolls, which could be used to break the lines, particularly of Gondor if they're saved. Uh, a Ballista as well as a Catapult, so two pieces of artillery. So some creative army comps, considering this is a very unique map. Very steep hill indeed. And then we have some Heavy Goblin Crossbowmen back here as well for those AP projectiles, and some Snaga Skirmishers lying in wait as well. Uh, meanwhile, the central of these two armies is going to be Mark XMD playing as Linda. Obviously this as well is going to be another unit model that we won't be seeing in the upcoming patch. The Noldoran Blade Masters being given a unit model very similar to the Noldoran Guard, but here they are. Multiple HP Sword Master unit for the Elves. Mythlon Marines, obviously hybrids with between Javelins and Line Infantry. Four Linden Archers, which just the basic archer on the front line, but Elven, basic Elven Archers uh, tend to be outnumbered in a skirmish fight, but obviously the quality can see them over the line, especially when they're backed up by more archers like the Harland and Guard. The classic front line of pikes and infantry for Linden, the Harland infantry backed up by the more quality focused pike actually, the Mithlon pike, although maybe we'll see some four Linden in here as well. Uh, but obviously, you know, very, very strong phalanx this from Linden, some Mithlon marines, and then back here we have the Noldoran horse lords. And then the final army on display today uh, looks like we have every elven faction, uh, Lothlorien, uh, being played by the Steward of Dale. So we've got some Lothlorien spears here on the front, as well as some Lothlorien archers. Uh, Galathrim Nobles, more Lothlorien Archers, uh, some Sylvan Spears here. Going back, we have the Mather Ilaz Gallen, and some Lothlorien Warriors, so again the two-handed Axemen for that extra AP. Uh, Haldir is going to be riding with the Galathrim Riders, multiple HP Horse Archers, and then up here we also have some Cavalry, so some Lothlorien Mounted Company. So, we'll just go up to the top of the hill here. I doubtless will have to engage in some slow-mo as the action is going to be happening all across the map, but let's begin. Oh, and that is time six, which we definitely don't want. Uh, we can see here the trebuchet immediately turning around to start bombarding the runic position by the looks of things. Rune are the most immediate threat to Gondor. So we go in there, just missing, only hitting the crew, which is not really worth a great deal, especially considering how much the trebuchet costs to field. You can see here that Merc would also be lining up here, as well as in Ladra. So all of this team seems to be intent on putting the pressure on Gondor, which honestly, the other team of three could use their advantage by attacking these three in the back, because Gondor will do very well if they win this, to be fair. They will have to absorb an awful lot of pressure, and their army, while it is individually, probably contains more quality than any other army on the field, uh, it is still going to have to go up against a lot of quality-focused units from the attackers, being a lot of elves on the field today. Here come the Eastron clansmen, the Karandros marksmen still idle, Although the Narim getting into position means they will probably have to start firing at some point or another. Rune very quickly getting themselves into a position. Probably trying to back themselves up into a corner right up here into, at the top of the map. Where they actually have a... Uh, they can actually use the terrain to their advantage as well. Uh, but even so, Gondor definitely have sort of surrounded on all sides by foes. 
it does look as though uh, the two separate teams on the low ground are not going to go after one another quite so quickly, although the cavalry from Mirkwood and Imladris is not going to be useful at all for dealing with Gondor entrenched as they are. Gondor Spearman here, so the Eastron clansmen are going to be the first ones in, colliding oh, with the Gondor Spearmen. The Gondor Spearmen will hold against the Eastron clansmen though, and obviously biding the time is biding their time is really the best that Gondor can hope for here. Karandros Marks, I think, going to be trying to do damage to this front line. Maybe, maybe try and pick them apart. Eastron Crossbowmen getting into position, which the Eastron Crossbowmen need to be skirmished down by Gondor. The stopping power of crossbows is going to be too much for them to bear for too long. You can see the Narim also getting into position. That is the Runic Catapult as well, which it looks as like looks as though they're going to be trying to deal with the Trebuchet. So Rune definitely playing the uh, the role of the anti-fun brigade here by trying to bring down the Trebuchet so early. One of them has already been destroyed as well. Good thing they're in uh, they're using the flaming projectiles, otherwise it would be a real problem for Gondor to try and keep that thing online. Uh, we can see here that the Amladris army very rapidly trying to retreat up the hill, as it were, to the assistance of the Mirkwood cavalry, as the wargs from the Misty Mountains and the Drake Broodlings also chase off the Amladris infantry. There's still some Amladris cavalry down there, though. A little bit isolated, to be honest. And they are being hunted by the Noldorin Horse Lords as well as the projectiles. Again, I can't really refer to these teams as... Uh, by their colours, because technically speaking, as we're viewing it from the Gondorian perspective, all of these are enemies. See so here, the Eldar Quinger getting into position, and I think now might be a good time to just sort of slow things up a little bit. You can see here that the Runic infantry continuing to try and push. I think the sporting thing for all of the attacking teams to do uh, would definitely be to go after one another and not just try and put as much pressure on Gondor as possible, because Gondor, with the best will in the world, are not going to win this. Like, really what the best that they can hope for is the fact that they can outlast one of the attacking teams. Uh, which Rune sending in their Eastron Clansmen first of all are actually not performing too well against the fully upgraded Gondorian Infantry and Spearman. Which is perhaps to be expected from a Militia unit, even one that can be upgraded as much as the Clansmen. Gondor, Spearman and Infantry getting into position, the Axemen of the Sarnak still biding their time. Uh, you can see the terrain on this map is pretty extreme in all aspects up here. Rune wisely occupying this high ground and Gondor are pretty powerless to do anything about this uh, really the best that they can hope for is the fact that Lothlorien come up here and start tangling up with Rune as well uh, but obviously Gondor are very much marooned on their hill so movement is going to be very limited from their perspective Eastron clansmen over here meanwhile uh, the continued retreat actually of Mirkwood and Imladris which I'm actually a little bit surprised about because eventually these two teams are going to have to face one another. And I suppose, you know, what the elves are hoping to do is sort of occupy the really high ground up here. And use that to their advantage, which is a sound move, I suppose. Uh, but that is also going to put them right at the mercy of the Gondorian skirmish line and artillery, actually. Uh, which could, you know, reap a bloody toll on them. Especially if the other team don't have to deal with any of that. Uh, Rune definitely the ones taking point here. The Axemen of Lasarnak coming in to assist the Eastron Clans. And are actually a shaken at this point in time. That AP paying dividends. I'm actually very surprised that Gondor... Gondor are now targeting the Eastron Clansmen. But considering the uh, the health of this unit still, they've only just started to do that. Which, whenever you see crossbows, you need to focus them down. Especially when you've got skirmishers in a, such an advantageous position like Gondor has, you need to take these skirm these crossbows out, because otherwise they're just going to decimate your front lines. Scion Rim moving into position to engage the Gondorian infantry, which of course is still having to deal with a lot of skirmish fire from further up the hill from Rune. Um, you can see now as well that Lothlorien starting to get themselves into position, which uh, Rune taking point like this does mean, of course, that they're going to be taking more casualties from the Gondorian defence, which could work out for Lothlorien in the long run. I'm actually very disappointed in the fact that the attackers have not not decided to go after one another here on the low ground. Um, I feel as though, in particular, uh, that's going to be down to Linden and the Misty Mountains to start forcing the issue over here. Maybe they're biding their time, but I do hope that the attacking sides do go after one another before Gondor are crippled beyond all recognition. Otherwise, that reeks of cowardice from the attackers. Here come the Carmel's Chosen. One player who certainly isn't being cowardly is Hunter Wayward. 
committing forward an awful lot of units to deal with this sort of lower placed Gondorian infantry, which they're going to be able to do, especially with the backup of all of these crossbows. Lothlorien getting in position. I mean, Master Blaster at this point would be well within his rights to uh, retreat a little bit. Here come the Warns of Minas Ithil, who are now going to be using their own body piercing projectiles. There is the trebuchet. Getting some nice kills there on the runic line, uh, but that is also going to be enough with the friendly fire to cause a bit of a rout in the Gondorian lines. Gondor infantry shuffling into position there as the Lothlorian archers continue to try and do some damage, but the Lothlorian archers also being skirmished down now from the high ground. The, Car the Carmel shadow bows getting into position, obviously rangers going to be very, very effective with that body piercing, especially high up as they are. The Galathrim nobles are also in position now. Rune continuing to push forward, which is very bold of him. I like it. Uh, and he can certainly afford to do so, considering that this team over here, the Rune, Imladris, Mirkwood Alliance, have been able to sort of take the higher ground. I feel as though they definitely should be the ones to, uh, to push forwards. They should definitely not just try and post up on the hill and just sit there. Very unsporting that would be. Gamperin pushing forward with their halberds. The Scion Rim also now moving forwards. Uh, but obviously the Gondorians starting to lose stomach for the fight down here. Uh, and really the best thing Gondor can hope for is that both of these sides start to attack one another. When they are pushed up to the top of the hill over here. And not just continue to try and go after Gondor exclusively. That was a whiffed shot there on the Hiri Lung. As the Gwaithi Arthand continue to starts to move to support. And Madras Guardians as well. Again, there is the possibility, I'm not sure what the rules were, but whoever takes the beacon first could well be declared the winner, which, if that is the case, then Team Lothlorien over here need to get a shift on, otherwise they're going to be left in the dirt by the attacking team up here. Here we can see the Gondorian infantry trying to hold, but they are wavering. A lot of this is coming is down to all of the skirmishes that they've got up on the hills over there. The Eastron Crossbowmen, the Shadow Bows. Rune definitely very quickly moved their skirmishes into an advantageous position, and now... Gondor are being made to pay the price for it. You can see here that Lothlorien trying to get up onto even higher ground, so the high ground definitely a very... definitely the thing that everyone wants to take in this fight. I'm not sure whether there's a point higher than the beacon itself, but obviously Gondor will not be giving up that without a real fight. Galathrim Riders getting into position to try and skirmish down as well. The Branon e Nanway throughout here on the flank as well, which could actually be skirmished down fairly efficiently if Lothlorien choose to do so, and they are choosing to do so. Some nice hits here. They may be multiple HP, but very low armor, no shields. As soon as that hit, those hit points are gone, uh, they will be mown down by Lothlorien skirmishers. The Mounted Company are now also moving forward, so good to see the Steward of Dale is now starting to move in. You can see actually here that the skirmishers are uh, potentially going to be in all sorts of trouble here as the Lothlorien Mounted Company start to charge down the very steep incline. Uh, but not really what they were hoping to do, I think. Not exactly the best of charges there. A bit limp. Lothlorian Mount Company charging in here. They do have shields, so they should be able to do some decent damage here. The Therny Tower, who are also up here, but these skirmishers are not going to enjoy going up against the Lothlorian Mount Company. They're going to need some support. The Branon Nanwaith are nearby, who will put the Mountain Company to the sword, even with the Alvin skill. Rune continuing to push forward, very impressively so. The Citadel Guard are here. Uh, with the support of some Care Andros Marksmen, but here you can see that Rune are just continuing to bludgeon their way through the lines with the support of those skirmishers up on the hill. Continuing to do an awful lot of damage. The veterans of Osgiliath are trying to do what they can to thin out those numbers. Uh, but now we can see that the Misty Mountains are going to be attacking from this side, which is good to see. Linden and the Misty Mountains could put some real pressure here on Mirkwood and Imladris in particular. And they could yet be made to pay for their early committal to the fight against Gondor, but Gondor you can see on the minimap utterly surrounded at this point. The Dalupeng e Emon Dwyer have been left behind. That is a big loss for Mirkwood. These body piercing archers who are being squashed by the snow trolls. Uh, you can see the Noldorin Horse Lords are also over here as well, so the cavalry. The Drake Broodlings continuing to move forward. They are shaken, however, uh, being in close proximity with the Elder Enway Heru Myro. 
Uh, but they're now eager once again. Very weird unit, the Drake Broodlings, but they can be brutally effective. The Misty Mountains Trolls now coming forward in force. They have lost half their men. Uh, which, with the combination of themselves and the Noldoran Horse Lords, this Harry Myra is not going to stand a chance. Even Imladris Cavalry will not. And now Linden is starting to push forward with their own infantry. And again, committing forward an individual unit of spears like this, they're just going to get crushed underfoot by all of the Misty Mountains Trolls and Linden infantry. A very potent combination indeed. Now the war riders are also moving forward. So as this team here was eager to sort of move around and take the high ground, now the Misty Mountains and Linden are starting to do some real damage as they were starting to maneuver. The Haru Quinga are fighting, taking a charge there from the Drake Broodlings. All of these Elder Enway units taking some pretty severe casualties. Uh, these wargs are not going to like being under this much arrow fire, however. The Dag near him also in the background, backing up the Eldar Quinga. Uh, but this push so far has been pretty decent. Uh, Lothlorien, I suppose, are waiting for their allies to get into a more advantageous position. That was some nasty friendly fire there from the Catapult. Doing some more damage to Rune, and at this point the Citadel Guard able to gain an advantage in this fight. With the assistance of their enemies. Lothlorien are actually pushing in down here as well. It's only Lothlorien Spears uh, who... With the best will in the world, they're probably not going to be able to defeat Carmel's Chosen and Imladris Guardians. But it is going to make reinforcing those runic infantry units who are pushing up to the beacon that much more difficult. Uh, but you can see now Imladris is going to surround those Sylvan Spears. They're already wavering, actually. The Lothlorien Spear is broken. Uh, and Lothlorien, actually, it looks as though they are pulling back a little bit. The Lothlorien Warrior is coming in. Uh, but now you can see that Mirkwood securing the high ground here. So Lothlorien in a little bit of a precarious situation as Imladris uh, breaking off those spears so in the end that blockade there didn't really last too long and now Imladris Guardian is going to be able to move up to support Rune. Meanwhile moving over here we can see I think it's about time we went down a half speed again actually. The Drake Broodlings continuing to cause a bit of havoc Harland and infantry pushing up to sort of push the Eldar Quinga back. A lot of Elven skirmishers, both mounted and dismounted, further up the hill. But they don't really have enough infantry to hold back this push. And Linden and the Misty Mountains smashing through what little resistance was down here. Haldir getting chopped down by the Therny Tower. So the Galathrim Riders unfortunately just overwhelmed. Not able to really lay down as much effectiveness as they would have wanted. Linden's infantry continuing to push forwards. Wardens of Alos Tyrion getting into position. If they can get into a good position as well, as far as rangers go, they are very, very effective indeed. And there's still, obviously, the Misty Mountains Cav at the bottom of the hill, which could be useful as soon as all of this skirmish power has been exhausted. The Bolg's champions in particular uh, should have free reign, especially the fact with the fact that the Gwaithi Rock Door have already taken some fairly substantial losses at the hands of the Drake Broodlings and a unit of standard Walk Riders. Again, I'm interested to see if the Rune, Mirkwood and Imladris Alliance will live to regret their very skirmish-heavy approach. Rune in particular, who, well, Rune didn't have as much of a skirmish approach as the others, a little bit more in terms of infantry, uh, but they've also been the ones to really try and push through Gondor, and they've been taking losses for their trouble. The Gamp Brim here on the front line, having to try and push through some Citadel Guard, not the easiest job. Imladris Guardians, meanwhile, trying to hold back the tide of Lothlorien units. Well, I say tight. Lothlorien don't really have the most in terms of numbers, but the armor piercing should be useful. Uh, but overall, the Imladris Guardians with the upgrade are a very tough unit to break down without support, especially seeing as the uh, the warriors don't seem to have much support in close proximity of their own. You can see there there's some Snaga skirmishes coming across in the Misty Mountains. Obviously, Lothlorien with a little bit more of a quality focus. You can see here the Imladris Guardians are probably actually going to be overwhelmed here by a combination of archers and warriors. The AP should certainly help matters. Um, here, the Lothlorien archers, again, the high ground proving to be one of the deciding factors here. Again, you can't hate on the Team Mirkwood too much for doing this, because obviously it is too good a position to pass up. Very steep hill. One of the reasons probably why the Beacon of Gondor map has not been used as much as you would think, uh, because it is difficult to have balanced encounters on, but this one has got so many variables uh, that whoever wins will certainly have earned it. These strong crossbows continuing to fire, as well as these Variag mercenaries. But let's get back over here, where the continuing push of Linden and the Misty Mountains. And again, it's really just... Well, there's some Hiriak up here, but 
a lot of skirmishers over here, and you'd imagine they're probably going to start running out of ammunition soon enough. Only one snow troll left, but having helped kill off Elder Enway, Haru Myro, Gwaithi Rockdor, and the Delupanki M and Dwea, uh, definitely a worthwhile investment here from Bacon Fish 302. Let's go back up to one speed. Cave Trolls continuing to move forward, and that is definitely going to be the end of the Elder Enway, Haru Vital. It's possible they're just trying to blob up the Linden and Misty Mountains forces for easier targets, but I kind of doubt that considering the lack of sustained focus from all of those skirmish units at the top of the hill. But obviously there, the Cave Trolls doing a very nice job indeed. There goes the Imladris General. Um, but the Imladris' morale should hold together just fine, to be fair. It will have an impact, but not like a truly... A truly devastating impact. Well, ones of Alos Tyrion over here, and lots of skirmish force being brought to bear now against Imladris, although against the Gwaithi Arthan, probably one of the units that is most durable to skirmish fire on the map with their heavy armor, their shields, their multiple HP. Very tough unit to wear down, maybe not the best at dealing damage. Uh, now you can see the cave trolls moving in. Again, the cave trolls not the best trolls in sustained combat, uh, but the Gwaithi Arthand are certainly taking an awful lot of punishment from all angles here. So Imladris taking the brunt of this Misty Mountains advance. Well. Gondor now slowly but surely being forced back. You would have, well, I mean, the veterans of Osgiliath and the Carandros marksmen coming here into position to actually hold back the tide. The Imladris Guardians already taking a few losses to Lothlorien at the foot of the hill. Gondor's line will hold a little while longer yet, and this is where Gondor will start to come into their own, uh, because the enemy teams really have no choice but to try and attack one another to get up to the beacon. Galathrim nobles down here with the Lothlorian warriors, in addition to some Lothlorian Maetha Ilaz Galan, who are actually doing tremendous damage to the Abran on Inanwe. And that is Thranduil. Mirkwood could lose their general here. In fact, I'd be surprised if they didn't. If he gets... Yeah, there he goes. In and amongst all those spears, not able to escape. Mirkwood losing their general as well, so Rune, amazingly. The only ones with their general left alive, despite him being on the front line against Citadel Guard. And here come the Galathrim nobles. So at this point, Mirkwood and Imladris need to get down here to sort of stem the tide here. Lothlorien have done some pretty nice damage. And they are also going to be backed up by Heavy Goblin, Crossbows and Snaga. Lothlorien don't have a lot of men left. Uh, but I actually wonder if Mirkwood and Imladris might not be better off actually just retreating further up the hill and just trying to dig in a little bit. Here we can see... Hiri Peng being committed to melee. Obviously, heavy elven archers perfectly at home in melee as well. Uh, stronger, actually, than the Maetha Ilaz Galen, I would uh, hazard to guess. The Heru Masil are down here as well, though, uh, which, as far as an Imladris unit goes, very, very damaging. They might not be multiple HP, but their stats are very high. Uh, there's some Lothlorian warriors coming down here, which will make life a little bit more uncomfortable for the Mirkwood archers. Uh, but I think... It's pretty finely poised at this point in time, actually. Early on, uh, Rune's push went pretty well, but at this point in time, the pressure being applied, you know, thankfully the Misty Mountains and Linden did advance around here and did a fair amount of damage, actually, to the Imladris forces. Nolder and Horsthor is not doing too well. Uh, meanwhile, you can see the Gwaithi Arthand, who took a fair amount of damage from skirmishers and trolls are now in melee up against Mithlon Marines. They should actually still win that. Uh, but they're all on their lonesome, so I would be extremely surprised if they weren't simply overwhelmed by all of these Linden forces. There's four Linden archers from Mark X and V there getting into position as well. Imladris trying to push forward more men to help break through this Gondorian front line. The Carmel's Chosen doing very nicely on the front line as well. Uh, but that trebuchet right in close proximity as well, doing some nice damage to the runic push. They definitely need these reinforcements from Imladris, because of course eventually... Another nice hit. The Gondorians will be able to call upon their elite units, including the Fountain Guard, the Honor Guard, the Alasar's Vanguard, and the Wardens of the White Tower. And here, of course, another very fine unit in melee, the Galathrim Nobles, slicing their way through very ag mercenaries, to the surprise of no one. Some Hiri Lung as well, uh, but here you can see the Therny Tower getting into position, doing some nasty damage there to the Lothlorian warriors. 
who are also going to be surrounded by Elder Enway Harumas Seal, so I would hazard to guess that Steward of Dale's army is probably not looking too healthy at this point in time. Blackback Berserkers from the Misty Mountains as well. The Misty Mountains have also got two pieces of artillery, which could yet prove to be a pretty important choice. On a map like this, it can certainly be a worthwhile endeavour. The Harumas Seal uh, can see that the Heavy Goblin Crossbow is getting into position now. They need to be real careful here, the Harumas Seal, because they're definitely going to be the target of a lot of crossbow fire with how devastating they can be in melee. And even with their armour, against sustained crossbow and javelin fire, they will not be able to stay standing for too long. And in fact, I think they're running for the relative safety of the assault on the beacon. Nimlothian on guard chasing off the Narim, so it looks as though this Gondorian frontline is going to fall apart. Harry Masil trying to sort of conceal themselves behind the terrain, but again, this is Lothlorian warriors and Galathrim nobles. Galathrim nobles, one of the units which would be able to go toe to toe with the Elder Enway Harry Masil. Over here, the Hethel E Tower getting into position, the dual axemen from Mirkwood, as Linden and the Misty Mountains sort of trying to sort of get themselves into a decent position. The Cave Trolls there finally being cut down by all of those skirmishers up on the hill there from Inladris and a few from Mirkwood, a few horse archers. Hiriak down here still as well. So the push is over, I would say. Initially it went well, but then it sort of petered out when they got to here. Still a lot of arrows being brought to bear against the Hiriak. Orland and Archers trying to do some damage on the retreat as well, which, when their back is turned, their shields will not come into play. And Mirkwood units don't tend to have the most armour. What do we have here? Veterans of Osgiliath maybe trying to retreat to the top of the hill. More men saved for later. Hethely Tower moving up to try and finish off what's left of the Gondorian uh, defensive positions. You can see that the trebuchet is going to be saved, a single one, with the crew as well, which is good to see. And Gondor still have a pretty meaty defensive position up here, so they could yet yeah, pull out a victory potentially. I find it unlikely, uh, but it is still possible. They need to sort of rely on the two factions on the lower ground, sort of tearing one another apart. Hethely Tower charging in, which is probably not well advised unless they have skirmish support, which they do from the crossbows. Because uh, Galathrim Nobles would be able to fairly easily beat Hathaly Tower. Another unit of Hathaly Tower charging up the hillside. They're continuing to try and push up the hill. The Veterans of Osgiliath slowing them down. Uh, but yeah, this unit of Hathaly Tower should probably not try to chase the trebuchet any further because they're just going to get stopped dead in their tracks by Fountain Guard. Bogs Champions. Might be worth being a bit more aggressive with these Bogs champions, purely because their use is going to be pretty limited, the sort of the smaller the scale of the battle gets as it focuses around the beacon. Might be worth trying to go after a lot of these skirmishes, even if they're out of ammunition, just trying to sort of cut down on the Mirkwood manpower, or the Imladris manpower, even as the Eldar Quinga start to move forward as they abandon their high ground position. Some Hiri Ak as well. Linden still hovering on the periphery. What have we here? Did they kill off those Galathrim nobles already, or did they retreat? Here come the Volg's champions, and the Volg's champions are being targeted by a lot of skirmish fire, but the multiplayer HP should save them long enough to get them into melee. And that should be fairly devastating to the Therny Tower, as long as Baconfish holds his nerve, which he's going to. A nice charge there, killing off a lot of the Therny Tower. Just trying to sort of cut down on the Mirkwood manpower and the Amladris manpower here is going to be their, their job here, the Bulk Champions, before they inevitably do start to fall to this withering skirmish fire. Uh, fairly limp charge, but that should still be, might be enough to break those Therny Tower actually. Meanwhile, pretty uh, concise advance up the hill here by Rune, Imladris and Mirkwood. Warns of Minas Ithil on the front line, but this is a very, very solid defensive line made up of Elisar's Vanguard, Warns of the White Tower, Fountain Guard. I mean, at this point, pretty much everything's being left on the line. The only things not in melee are the Trebuchet and the Athelian Rangers, and the Athelian Rangers are getting some nice body piercing hits all along these units here. 
can also see now pressure is being put on the Mirkwood Imladris Rune Alliance by the Misty Mountains Artillery shooting into that Eldar Quinga. Although based on their absence, you can see here the Bulk Champions have taken pretty bad casualties at the hands of all of these skirmishers, which undoubtedly means that they're out of HP. Eldar Quinga starting to move forward. Linden now starting to put pressure on the rear line. So I can only imagine here that the play is going to be to try and take the beacon as quickly as possible. But I'm not sure they're going to be able to do that. Gondor still had enough strength up here to be able to hold. Might have been wiser for them to try and be a little more cautious. Which is ironic considering they were quite cautious for the rest of the battle. Taking the high ground. Methodically sort of working their way through. Rune being the hammer. Imladris and Mirkwood being the support, uh, but now I think throwing caution to the wind, the trebuchet trying to get into a decent position to shoot, the trebuchet might actually be better off going after some of the Linden forces at the bottom of the hill, Nimloth and Onagard are in there, pushing forward, the Athelian Rangers might be saving a bit of their ammunition actually, Elder Enway, Haru Quinga turning around and trying to sort of hold back the attacking Misty Mountains forces which Black Bad Berserkers, again they're another unit which when their HP is expended, they do tend to fall fairly quickly under arrow fire, and they're very very deadly in melee as well needless to say. Wardens of Elos Tyrion pursuing some Therny Tower, Snaga Skirmish is getting into position, that's a lot of javelins, yeah, but obviously the Wardens of Elos Tyrion on the same side as the Filthy Snaga. Still some Merkwood units, and again, there's some more wargs down here. And now, the investment of wargs in the Misty Mountains is going to be dedicated to essentially mopping the units up, which Merkwood and Imladris were not able to commit forward quickly enough. Uh, I would say the advantage probably rests with Linden, Misty, and Lothlorien at this point, although I'm not really sure what Lothlorien have left. But it's a lot of skirmish power that Misty Mountains in particular still have with crossbows, javelins and artillery. You could say that maybe they don't have enough infantry left, which would be interesting to see. Fall into Marines moving into position, getting some nice hits there on the Elder Enway Harry Quinga. Meanwhile the Gondorian line, maybe not as secure as they would have hoped. The Athelian Rangers trying to get into a more advantageous position. The Trebuchet, potentially going to fire. The Elisar's Vanguard still doing a decent job. Yeah, and the trebuchet, ooh, very close there to killing off one of the catapults. Warg Riders. You can see here the Bulk Champions dealing with the Therny Tower. Some skirmish fire coming in there, but there's also the Ballista now getting into position from the Misty Mountains. Going after the trebuchet and setting it on fire as well. You can see here the Eldar Quinga taking some nasty damage from the fall into Narch at the base of the hill. The Wargs, if they charge in, should be able to break them. There goes the Runic General. So that is the last general from that team. And Rune, more likely than the two Elven factions on that team to uh, suffer morale hit. So there goes the Trebuchet. It's already done decent damage, although maybe not to the point that it was worth bringing for the price. Meanwhile, horrendous morale damage being done now. After all, those Ballista and Catapult shots can scarcely do any wrong. Either they'll hit they're attacking rivals, or they'll hit the Gondorians. And Gondor, I think, seeing the danger and now just going to pull back a little bit. Try and allow the other team to take the vast majority of the hits. I think they are actually going after the Gondorian defenders, but the Gondorians are able to sort of mitigate the chance of being hit a little bit by just retreating a little further up the hill. So at this point, Gondor is, I think, hoping... Oh, there's a break from the Hiriak as well, so... Being hit in the back by flaming artillery can break even resolute elves. Thranduil's death may have had more of an impact. Yeah, that catapult not having the easiest time hitting, so they might run dry their ammunition supply. Heavy goblin crossbows moving forwards as well. The fallen marines also charging up the hill. Blackback berserkers sort of pulling out. Maybe being saved for later. Try and deal with the more elite Gondorian units. 
Still some Hiriak and Hathley Tower up here, but they're definitely not going to be able to uh, win this fight all on their lonesome, so... Gondor, at the very least, it looks as though they are going to last longer than one of the attacking teams, but I don't think they're going to have enough left in the tank to finish off Misty and Linden. Harukwinga is still alive, but they're also going to be pursued by the four Linden Marines. Rows of Linden forces down there, as well as the wharfs getting ready. Snaga skirmishers. Javelin's obviously still there. They're still going after the Gondorian defenders. Although they're probably more likely to hit these uh, these Mirkwood units over here. Fountain Guard lying in wait. Shot from the catapult. Sailing way over. Ballista getting a few casualties on the Alisar's vanguard. Uh, but again, there's a lot of uh, ammunition they're pouring into this. I would still back them to win, even if the Catapult and Ballista don't inflict many more kills. I think they simply have too much in the way of brute force left. So who's going to make the first move? It definitely won't be Mirkwood, who are trying to sort of preserve the lives of more of their men. The Haru Quinga are shaken already. They're actually wavering. Reloading. That's a bold strategy to start trying to shoot them from so close. Or are the Haru Quinga sort of... Is this a... Alliance of Circumstance. Mirkwood and Imladris sort of joining with Gondor. Well, there goes Imladris. They broke under the arrow fire from the Harlinden Guard. Yeah, and the, skir the, the skirmishes are going to be the, the thing which do them in here because Gondor, of course, sort of trapped like rats on the top of this hill and not really going to be able to avoid much of this, whether it's the Misty Mountains artillery, crossbows, or javelins, or the elven archers. One way or another. Ones of Alostirian are there as well, maybe trying to get into a position to shoot. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a break from Mirkwood as well. Which obviously is not going to inflict any more casualties. Uh, but that is going to be the end of that team, I think. So Gondor able to outlast one of the attackers, but I think that Linden and the Misty Mountains are going to be able to take this one over the line for that particular alliance. in as well, the Mithlon Marines, more artillery coming in. Getting some fairly decent hit. Only three casualties, but at this point every little helps for Linden and Misty. Warns of Alos Tyrion. Destroying the routing Mirkwood units who are not going to be able to rouse off the field. A doomed endeavour from the start to try and flee when there's no way off the hill except the one where the enemies are. So now the Gondorians, I think they're just going to sort of throw caution to the wind and just sort of charge into melee and get as many kills as they can. There are the wounds of Alos Tyrion. Very nice looking ranger unit. Dual wielding as well, so that does put them above most other rangers, just because in terms of melee they have just had a little bit extra skill. That was a very nasty hit as well. The Gondorians just trying to commit everything they possibly can to melee, which of course puts them in full view of the catapult, but it was either die with a weapon in hand, or simply wait to be bled out at the wrists by all of the skirmishers. You can see the black backs are here. That was a brutal hit. And obviously with that, the final hope that the Gondorians will have had of sort of seeing this fight over the line probably disappearing there. Noldor and Blademaster is also moving forward, obviously a very strong unit. As those crossbows getting into position. Well, friendly fire on the Misty Mountains General. The cowardly goblins. More likely to rout than any other army on this field. It was an interesting battle, this. Obviously a very unique circumstance of sort of there being a capture point which one army holds and then two alliances of three teams try to bring it down and you know, it's the perfect map for doing that sort of thing really seeing as how it's uh, quite a unique one, the Beacon of Gondor. Ballista still just sort of whizzing in those shots. Javelins also being brought to bear against the Gondorians continuing to try and do some damage. And they are doing so to the Blackback Berserkers, who are sort of spread out all over the place. One of the Alisar's vanguard there, killing off 
a Warden of Alos Tyrion. But uh, this is going to be little other than a than a brave last stand by the Gondorians, I would imagine. A pretty neat thing to uh, herald the uh, imminent arrival of the new unit models that they're going to be taking. Which obviously is mainly going to be a thing for their basic units, which... Much nicer in .97, I must say, the Gondorians. Both cosmetically and mechanically, actually. You can see the heavy goblin crossbow men pushing up the hill. Victory seems certain, even when they've pulled out their uh, little butter knives. They're trying to get their crossbows out to try and shoot, but they're really not in the best position to shoot. The angle is not in their favour. Uh, but here you can see the Nolder and Blade Masters with their skill. Very few units like to take them on one to one. Gondor had a lot of elite units, but unfortunately the artillery just thinned them out too much. Even without that artillery, you know, the numbers were definitely not against them. Maybe it was possible they could just about pull out a win if they were to engage all of these units in just pure melee. Uh, but it would have been a miraculous victory anyways. Gondor did pretty well, considering the, uh, the situation they were in. Now obviously pushing. Not often you'll see Linden use their superior numbers and mass to try and push through someone. Uh, but here we are. Trying to deal with what's left of the Gondorians. Claim the Beacon of Gondor for themselves. There is the Trebuchet crew. Trebuchet crew, one of the last units left alive on the field. There's Aragorn as well. He's still here. Although, not for much longer, I would imagine. Knocking one of those Mithlon Marines on his ass. Getting a nice kill there, skewering him through the head. Uh, but now the Nolder and Blade Masters are in behind the lines. Uh, things are looking bleak for the heir of Elendil. And there he goes. Mithlon Marine's getting his mission, although Javelin's really not necessary at this point. You probably get more friendly fire, actually, considering how spread apart the remaining Gondorian infantry is as we close in on the last minute. Or last minute. The last uh, thousand frames, I should say, which... You now, that's a fairly long time for these Gondorians to sort of cling on in this fight. Yeah, well played, I think, by the, uh, the attacking team that won this. They... They pushed on the Mirkwood and Imladris forces at just the right time. They obviously, you know, Mirkwood and Imladris had stragglers, which the trolls, orcs, and drake broodlings ended up killing off. There goes the Gondorian general. Uh, and in the end, all that was left for Imladris and Mirkwood after, you know, Rune were aggressive, which, you know, in hindsight maybe wasn't a wise thing to do, but, you know, they did do a lot of damage to the initial Gondorian force, and perhaps. You know, perhaps Imladris and Mirkwood should have been more swift to get all of their forces at the top of that hill over there. And then it would have necessitated the attacking teams to sort of, tr the other attacking teams to sort of try and prize them off their vantage point. There are a lot of variables, a lot of moving parts in this fight, and in the end, that push with the trolls, drake broodlings, and cavalry from the Misty Mountains in London were probably the things which ultimately ended up winning them the fight. Lothlorien pushed at the same time as well. Which was important. They may well have died for it. Um, the steward of Dale's army. His Lothlorien force may very well have died. For that push. But it was still important. For the victory that his team ultimately earned. Obviously that Misty Mountains artillery as well. Double artillery ending up. Proving to be a wise investment. Forcing the Gondorians to move forward. And just sort of hammering that victory home. Harland infantry moving into position. And that is going to be it. The Linden forces celebrating alongside the Filthy Goblins. Scarcely will you see a more unlikely alliance. And that is going to be it. Replay finished. So we're not going to be able to see the stats of the men, unfortunately. But Gondor probably got quite a lot of kills. They had to fight pretty much every army on the field today at some point or another. Um, but yeah, a lot of elven factions on display as well. So a lot of quality, a lot of elite units. Rune and the Misty Mountains, the two evil factions. Uh, yeah, a very unique fight, I think. And as I said... I think that push down here was, you know, leaving too many units of stragglers behind in Ladris and Mirkwood. If they were going to retreat up the hill, they should have done so with everything very, very quickly in order to sort of make that worth it. 
Uh, yeah, and I think Lothlorien, you know, the sacrifice was a very necessary part of their victory. They needed to move in to sort of keep up the pressure from both sides, and they lost because of it, but their team as a result was able to win, and obviously that desperate push at the end from Mirkwood, Imladris and Rune leads me to believe that the victory conditions were either, you know, take the take the beacon and you win, um, which, you know, is a desperate effort, and but in the end there was little else for them to do at that point. Gondor, of course, did everything they could. There was very little in terms of tactical flexibility they could have. I suppose they could have brought some cavalry, but Gondor's cavalry has never really been match winning. It's more really to sort of accent their infantry, and if it was out on its own, sort of trying to mix it with Imladris' cavalry, Mirkwood's spear cavalry, Wargs, Lothlorien's sort of bow cavalry, as well as the mounted company, was never really going to go too well for them if they did that. So I can see why they went full infantry and sort of tr really tried to sort of hammer home the defensive aspects of the Gondorian lines. Uh, but yeah, very interesting fight, very unique fight. So big thanks to Master Blast for sending this in. Uh, I know that he's been sort of working on maps and... Uh, and he's been sort of helping with point nine seven, which again there are, there's a limit on who can sort of send point nine seven replays with the work in progress nature of it. Don't want to be sending out too much in the way of false information ahead of its release after all. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. And next, I'm not really sure. I do have, I believe, a f sort of two v two v two v two, which I can put out, uh, which could be interesting. Uh, but I do have sort of a selection of things which I could I could choose to do next. I haven't really decided in what order it's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will join me for whatever is next.